Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a little coronamid pattern I call the Crazy 8 coronamid. Now I got the idea for this. It's somewhat of a mixture of a couple different patterns. Uh, one of the coronamids that I've always liked to fish is Chan's coronamid, which has a feature of uh, gills pointing out past the eye of the hook on either side. I really like this feature in a fly, but I also like the more uh, slender coronamid style, beseech style flies. And so this is one that I put together over the past uh, couple months here. I've gone through a few different iterations and this is kind of what I came out with. So I tie this in a few different colors, but this is the olive brown version that we're going to be doing today. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw for some of the stickers, the flies, and uh, some fly tying materials here on the channel. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. All right, so let's get a fresh hook. We're going to start off by putting a, a smaller bead onto this fire hole 315. So typically when I'm tying chronomids this size uh, in size 10, I'm going to be using a 3.2 millimeter bead, but I've got on here a 2.4 millimeter, millimeter bead for the front. And then I'm going to take a 3.2 millimeter bead. I'm going to turn it around and put the wide side up against the smaller bead. All right, let's get that hook into the vise. So it'll become evident while we put the beads that way in just a moment. We'll make sure we have our first bead pushed forward and we're going to start by wrapping a little bit of thread on there just to get things started. We're going to be using brown olive for this fly today. We're going to be using a 70D UTC. So we just want to get right in behind the bead as close as we can. A couple wraps and we'll snip off the tag end. We're going to grab a little bit of Zelon in white. If you don't have Zelon, you can use um, something like a midge gill or a white EP fiber or Congo hair, that sort of thing. So we're going to take a small length of that and we're going to just tie it on as close as we can in behind the bead. And what I like to do is just get a couple wraps just to get it secured and then turn it sideways like I was tying a uh, coffin fly. And then we just want to put some wraps uh, on the other side. We're going to basically cross wrap that in just to make sure that it's secure. And this will kind of help keep those two sides separated a little bit as well. And we're also going to add a little bit of adhesive or some UV resin here just to make sure that things stay on their sides. It's part of the reason for doing this step is just so that we kind of keep those two sets of breathers apart as we tie the fly. So we'll just add a few more wraps in behind the bead just to kind of tighten up those gills a little bit. We want to try and Keep them both on the sides as much as possible. Just trim that up just to make it a little bit easier to deal with. And we'll just kind of grab those bundles of gills just to kind of bundle them together. Just so we want to try and keep them together as much as possible so that they don't fray apart and join themselves in the middle. And we're going to take a little bit of bone dry UV resin or you can just use a head cement here just to kind of help keep these uh, gills separated and give that a quick zap. So I like to pull the gills forward so I usually leave them a little bit longer when I tie them just so they're easier to grasp. I'll give that a quick zap and we'll add a quick whip finish here. So you'll remember when we put that second bead on, we put it with the wide side towards the 
bead so that'll help us kind of conceal those gills in behind there and push the back bead up against that front bead so we'll reattach our thread just behind our second bead now and we're going to start to build a little bit of a taper towards the uh, hook point as we tie in this fly so for our first rib on the fly we're going to be using this stretchy uh, this is a life flex this is a stretchy floss uh, you might also see this under a number of different names and we're going to be using a piece of red and I like this material to use especially for chronomids it gives you um, the ability to stretch it so that it's fairly slim at the back and then you can relax on the stretch when you're coming up towards the head of the fly and you can add a little bit more volume to it for a second rib or accent rib, we're going to use a single piece of silver flashaboo. And we're going to tie those in both together. We want to try and take that down the uh, curvature of the hook using touching turns as much as possible. Just be careful that you don't pull the flashaboo while you're pulling on the um, life flex. <laughs> You'll warp the flashaboo if you try and pull it the same way you do the uh, flex so we'll just go down to where kind of where we're stab establishing our body then we'll wind up again try and get it right behind the bead want to keep these turns uh, touching turns as much as possible and then as we go down and back we're just going to try and build up a little bit of a taper here we want to try and keep this fly fairly thin overall but just a little bit of taper towards the bead you can tie this in a few other colors here we're using the olive brown but I've also tied this with a black uh, I really like claret for this kind of chronomid and also if you probably the lightest I'm gonna go is just like a straight olive color for this so now we've got our body done we're gonna bring up our first rib so we're gonna stretch that floss as much as we can during the first few wraps and then as we move forward a little bit we're going to relax it a, a little bit as we spiral up the hook shank and then once we get to just behind the bead we're going to start securing that in place and because this is such a stretchy material you want to make sure that you put wraps both behind and on top just to make sure that it gets locked in place really well we are going to be adding a little bit of UV resin to this afterwards, but the last thing you want is for that to come unravel before you get to that stage. So we just trim that off. We'll save the rest for our next fly. And if you want to, you can add a half hitch in here just so you, that you don't accidentally bump that thread and uh, ruin your fly. So next we'll take our silver flashaboo and we're going to spiral that up in the void between the wraps of the uh, stretch floss. And you can try and get it in behind the leading edge or the trailing edge of the floss if you like. But I find just in the middle is fine. It still gives that segmentation that you're after. We'll tie that off and give that a trim. And then we'll just add a few more wraps here just to kind of clean up the thorax of the fly. If you want to, you can actually add a little bit of peacock hurl here or a little bit of uh, ice stub in peacock. Just add our whip finish and trim our thread. All right, we're almost done. Just got a couple steps left to do. So first we're going to take a little bit more bone dry. We're just going to coat the body of the fly. So I like to just turn it upside down just to make sure you get that bottom coated a little bit and make sure we get uh, nice coverage on both sides as well as the top and the bottom. And then your fly is going to be fairly secure. You're not going to have to worry about that stretch wrap or the floss, stretch floss, coming undone. 
and give that a zap for a few seconds. And that should be cured. Just want to make sure that it's not tacky at all. And so the last step on this fly is just to trim off those gills. And I like to kind of pull everything forward and trim them about the same length as the eye of the hook. Might have to come in here a little bit just to even those up and uh, kind of pull the fibers apart if they've gotten stuck together at all. But there you go. There's my Crazy 8 Coronamid. Hope you guys enjoy fishing this in the still waters coming this spring and late into the fall. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vise. Cheers.